Keith Paints. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Keith Paints. Today, I'm painting Atala Mastana, a human rogue assassin. The model is by Titan Forge Minis, one of their Titans of Adventure, available through their Patreon. This model is also part of my Goobertown Roulette Season 3 entry, and the gods of random have chosen as follows. Her theme is Creepy Spooky Scary. Her main color is Brown, Beige, Black, or White. Her secondary color is also Brown, Beige, Black, or White. And a new technique to try is Weathering. As usual, I have created a D&D character first before painting the model. Also as usual, each model ended up with an adventuring partner. Atala's partner is a steampunk gnome named Nim, for whom I will be assigning the Artificer class from the book Eberron, Rising from the Last War. The book is not set in Faerun, the D&D world I am most familiar with, but the class can be used here just fine. I played with the idea of making them dimension hoppers and giving them both a background from Eberron, but in the end I decided against it. Too much extra reading. I was hesitant to make her a simple criminal rogue, so I was thinking of making her of the charlatan background, but I felt like a charlatan wouldn't be creepy, spooky, or scary. Rather, they would be very nice and inviting, until you reveal their deception. I decided that should actually be Nim. He acts as a traveling merchant, selling baubles and trinkets and these amazing little automata that never fail to distract everyone around, sometimes even earning him a summons from the local lords to appear before court. All a distraction, of course. A certain noble will be found later with a knife in his back. Or maybe some jewels will go missing. Atala is of the assassin archetype of Rogue, but that doesn't mean she can't be a high-class thief when the opportunity arises. I had wanted to avoid the criminal background, but in the end, it's what worked best. Obviously, she would be a hired killer, and her criminal contact can help her secure jobs. I feel like she's reckless, but maybe not that reckless. And I feel like she has confidence, but maybe not that much confidence. So I decided to make her a planner. She is aware of her limitations and does her best to always have a backup plan. As for her ideal, she does desire wealth, but she's not evil, and these two seem a little too mutually exclusive. Let's say, she's loyal to her friends and close associates, and does her best not to interfere with the work of others in the trade, but sometimes troublesome individuals need to be dealt with, and sometimes they can be friends or close associates, so nothing is off the table. None of these bonds really work for me, but if you twist this one just a little, she is not intent on being the best that ever lived, maybe just the best assassin she can be, without drawing attention to herself. And as for her flaw, I think there are probably a few people who have woken up with a terrible hangover and some of the stolen jewels in their possession. People stop looking for thieves if they think they've found them. Humans are pretty boring, so I had kinda skipped that step, but then I found this little bit here. Let's see, she gets stealth and deception from her criminal background, and as a rogue she gets four of these, let's say, intimidation, perception, performance, and persuasion. Let's give her athletics as well, in case she needs to run. After reading through the feats, a couple like actor or skulker would seem suitable for an assassin, but the observant feat seems almost perfect. Plus 5 to passive perception and investigation, she'll hardly have to watch for traps. The fake book on the shelf will be obvious. And reading lips couldn't hurt either. I think that's the one. Okay, let's paint this model. I start by giving everything that I want black, which is just about everything, a base coat with Abaddon Black. Her leather boots and pouches and gloves, I base coat with Rhinoxide. To distinguish between her black cape and her black bodysuit, I'm highlighting the bodysuit in purple, starting with Nagaroth Knight, followed by a layer of Xerius Purple. Her face, I base with Bugman's Glow. 
Her hair gets rhinoxide. The rope on her belt gets a base coat of Xandri dust. It took a few tries, but I covered her eyes with white scar, then used Abaddon black for her pupils, and cleaned up around them with Bugman's glow. I glazed way too much corn red onto her lips, and had to clean up around them with more Bugman's glow. I layered Cadian flesh tone and Kiz Love flesh onto her nose and cheeks, and then used some watered down Agrax earth shade to bring down the brightness of her face just a little. I also washed her rope with Agrax Earthshade at the same time. I edge highlighted the straps holding on her daggers with Mechanicus Standard Grey. I also use Mechanicus Standard Grey for the cross hatching on her cloak. I tend to do all the strokes in one direction before turning the model and doing the strokes in the opposite direction. It takes less model turning in total and gives the first set of hatching a chance to dry. After Mechanicus Standard Grey, I did the same thing with Dawnstone, but focusing more on the raised portions. The final layer is Celestra Grey, only on the very peaks and edges. I layered and edge highlighted the leather parts with Gorthor Brown. The few metal bits I base coat with Lead Belcher. Her scarf I base coat with Corn Red and crosshatch with Evil Sun Scarlet and Wild Rider Red. The handle of her dagger also gets the same colors. I give all the metal a wash with Nuln Oil and then use it to darken the recesses of her scarf and her cloak as well. I hatch Yushabti Bone onto the rope and then wash it with more Agrax Earthshade. For her base, I use Dawnstone and Celestra Grey on the tiles, and Elysian Green on the vine and leaves. On all the metal bits, I stippled on Iron Breaker, except for the dagger. I layered it onto the dagger. And then I did the same thing with Runefang Steel, stippling highlights on all the metal, and edge highlighting the dagger. And finally, I used some ground up pastel as a weathering powder on her boots, the bottom of her cloak, and the base. And that is Atala Mastana complete. I'm quite happy with this model, though I think her cloak might be a little too bright in the end. Maybe I should have washed the whole thing with Null Oil to bring down the brightness a little. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you've made it this far, then why not hit the like button as well? I have a few other videos just like this that you might like. Thanks for watching.